Let's go into selecting the measures we're going to use to measure progress. So again, we're going to select multiple measures to determine response, effectiveness, and also whether students are generalizing skills back to the classroom. Generally, these will include a measure that looks first at the skills being intervened upon. Okay, so this is the intervention focus. This could be a mastery measure. It could be an intervention embedded assessment. For Chris, our imaginary student, the team is using a standard reading intervention that includes a weekly measure of his progress through the intervention curriculum. Next, we'll also use a curriculum based measure or a computer adaptive test at the student's grade level to ensure their generalization and at their instructional level if they're monitored off grade level. We'll use the measure on their instructional level for graphing progress most frequently if they're off grade level. If a student's less than two years below grade level, the team may choose to only monitor on that grade level probe, but more than two years typically means you'll monitor most frequently at their instructional level, and this prevents frustration in the student and the educator. For the example of Chris, we know that he's significantly below grade level. So we would measure him one time a month, about one time a month, using a fourth grade oral reading fluency probe because that's his assigned grade level. This would be infrequent. But more frequently, to make sure that he's progressing, we would use a second grade oral reading fluency probe. And this would be what would be graphed with a trend line and an aim line and a goal set within that material because he's significantly below. Last, we would take into account other classroom tests in the area of concern, other teacher observations, and other anecdotal data that's already being collected to ensure that Chris is generalizing.